I'm 28 years old and I'm a professional downhill mountain bike rider. I started riding bikes at a really young age. Um, I was off training wheels, racing BMX by the time I was four. Uh, as you can see by my wheels, I used to love pink and I played a lot of Barbie dolls, but one thing I remember the most was how much I liked riding my bike. When I was 12, I got my first mountain bike and I started racing downhill mountain bikes when I was 14. I raced my first national championship and since then I, I've been national champion nine times. If you don't know what... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, if you're not too sure what downhill is, um, this is a little preview from one of the tracks I raced earlier this year. Bye, Yeah, the GoPros these days make it look more impressive. <laughs> uh, in 2006, I was crowned Junior World Champion in New Zealand, and that was a dream of mine since I was four, so to have that up my sleeve is something that I'll never forget. <clears throat> the very next year, in 2007, I raced my first World Cup Series as a privateer, where I finished third overall in the World Cup and third at the World Championships. Unfortunately, five years ago, it was harder to get sponsored as a girl, and due to that, it led to a five-year retirement from the sport that I loved and a job in a sand mine. In 2011, I started racing some local races again, and then I attended some national events, and I won every race that I raced in. My older brother, he's the one in the middle, uh, signed for a huge team for 2012, and they offered me a job to ride fully paid from there. I'm the one in the white jersey. <laughs> <laughs> so 2012 started off amazing for me. I raced my first World Cup in five years and I came first and people hardly even knew my name, so it was fabulous. I knew from the moment I signed my contract that that was that was my dream, that was my passion, like riding bikes is what I, I was meant to do. And I get to ride alongside my older brother and yeah, like the season was going amazing, but downhill is pretty dangerous. <laughs> uh, that was earlier this year and I'm fine, but <laughs> at the end of 2012, at the sixth round of the World Cup in Val d'Isère, France, I crashed and had to be airlifted to the closest hospital, where I suffered um, a broken femur, a broken collarbone, bruised lung and internal bleeding. So they operated on me as soon as I got to hospital and they just hammer that thing straight through your hip. It looks like I was on holiday, but for three weeks I was not on holiday in France. And the recovery began like the very next day, pretty much. I couldn't move my leg myself, so I had machine assist to start moving, help me moving my leg. And then we went to standing up and trying to walk and then finally walking with the assistance of a walker. Finally, the French let me go home and I had spent three weeks in hospital and it was time to go home and get back to my normal life and, and start walking again and riding. So it took six weeks from my accident to be able to walk unassisted. And that was very exciting. <laughs> Six months after the accident, I raced my first race 
back, which was the national championships in 2013. Uh, physically, it was hard, but mentally, I think it was near impossible. I was able to win that race by less than one second. The road to World Cup racing was well on its way back. I was, you know, working on my mental strength and my physical strength, so I was training ready for the first World Cup in 2013. And two weeks after the national championships, I crashed again and broke my other collarbone. <laughs> so I went straight into surgery and isn't it a beauty? <laughs> So eight weeks later, I was in Fort William at the first World Cup of 2013, ready to race again. It was really hard to get back into the circuit mentally, but physically I f was finding my confidence, getting used to racing again. The results weren't there, but you know I just had to get back on the bike. And then at just, I think, three months after that collarbone, I I crashed again at a race and broke the other one again. So if I took my shirt off, I would look like this. <laughs> Unfortunately. <clears throat> so it wasn't all bad, I mean, the drugs, but... <laughs> no, just kidding. <clears throat> In hospital, it was a bit hard at first, but then I just tried to find something ahead of me that could have been my goal to give me like that hope to go forward. And that was the World Championships, which were just seven weeks away. So I started training for that as much as I could without having an arm, and I was able to finish third. <laughs> Thank you. So from then to now, you know, it's been a hard road mentally. I've, I work with a sports psychologist to help me with my mental, and it's been tough physically, but, you know, I feel like I've really learned a lot from my accidents, and I've been able to overcome injury to be stronger than, you know, I would have been in the past. Riding bikes is the thing that I love the most out of anything, and, you know, once I decide that, that was what I was going to do. Nothing was going to stop me. This year was my best year so far, winning the Crankworks Downhill Series. And I came third overall in the World Championships and third overall in the World Cup Series. I didn't want to give a cliche talk on getting over injury or follow your dreams, follow your passions. Like What I've done is completely normal to me, but... If I wanted to leave you with something, it would be f discover your own mountain and instead of climbing it, hurdle down it because life isn't always about reaching the top. <laughs> Thank you.